Well, it has been a while since I have addressed this um, DIY cyclone separator that I'm making. Um, a lot of people have been asking about where part two is. Um, I just, it's fallen to the wayside as I've worked on other projects. So as you can see, I've started to roll a lip along the edge here. And it's not perfect, but that's okay because basically what this lip becomes will become is a flange that will be sandwiched between two pieces of wood, two rings of wood. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm taking my heat gun and I'm warming up the edge and I'm keeping it lined up, the edge of the table, lined up with this black mark that I made and I'm going around and I'm just folding the edge over and I'm trying to get a nice 90 degree here so I just started here I I heated up the edge and kinda of rolled it by hand first just to get it kinda of going in the right direction and now I'm fine tuning that just with the edge of my workbench so if you want to Stick around, take a look, see what I'm doing. I'm going to get right at it. Okay, that went a lot quicker than I thought it was going to take, so it's pretty good. So, um, you know, as you can see, I've formed a lip around this, what will be the top portion of the cone. It did curl a little bit on some spots, but that's okay, because this lip is going to get sandwiched between two pieces of wood, two wood rings to create the you know rigid top ring of the uh, the cyclone so um, just wanted to elaborate a little bit more on what I'm using here uh, this is just a cheap uh, a cheap heat gun and it's got this attachment on it and this attachment serves two purposes first of all it allows me to focus the heat only where I want it and not where I don't. So if I put it right here, anything below that blade is going to get hot and this portion up here stays cool. Second of all, it does work uh, a little bit like a hot knife so it scores the plastic where I'm running it which helps, it kind of aids in me being able to make it that hard 90 degree turn right here. So. Um, it worked out really well. Now I have to do this one. This one's going to probably be a little bit more complicated because it's a tighter radius. And um, so the this this portion, oops, sorry, this portion right here will have to stretch a little bit more. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and attempt that right now. And then I'll get back with you when I'm done. Okay, the bottom ring is mostly done. If you look inside, you'll see that it's not exactly um, circular. It's a little bit more oval shaped. But the rings that I'm going, the flange rings I'm going to make should help um, form that into the right shape. And then I, I think I'm going to heat it up too when I apply the rings to kind of help smash everything down. There, it really required a lot of stretching. <clears throat> so I found that uh, cutting small reliefs on the outer rim really helped it uh, conform. Unfortunately this was the last bit here that I did and it flattened out perfectly after I cut these little reliefs in it. So that's something worth considering if you are planning on doing something like this. This is a work in progress. I am just kind of uh, playing it by ear and going along um, you know just kind of making it as I go I guess is what I meant to say. But uh, it stands up on its own now, and that's nice. And um, I'm really making all this effort just to avoid having to buy a Super Dust Deputy. Uh, nothing against them, they just cost a lot of money. And I'd rather use that money to buy a nice Win filter to go on the discharge of this dust collector. So I'm going to set up now to start cutting these rings out. And. Um, once I get that set up, I'll come back here to the camera. So, a long time ago I ended up picking up one of these router guide kits and I never really 
did anything with it. I know you can build a circle jig real easy for a router, but I bought this at one of those Sears that was going out of business, and I think it was like ten bucks for the thing. And so, and it looked like it was a return. It was all taped up, and and everything's here, but there is an there's an edge guide that comes with it, and you can see that the edge guide is a little beat up. Um, but it's just really thin steel, so I could flatten that as needed. I'm not worried about this part though. I'm worried about this beast here. So it gives you a base plate and an arm and a little pivot point. I mean it gives you some other cool stuff too. This is what what they call an offset base so when you're working on the edge of something you can it gives you a little bit more of a footprint to lay on the workpiece while the router's hanging off the end of the workpiece. So, anyway, so I have to put this special base plate on the router here. I also got this router at that same clearance uh, deal, the going out of business sale. I think this router cost me 20 bucks. It was missing a collet, but since I have other Craftsman routers of this exact same model, I have plenty of collets to go around. So, anyway, I'm going to try to get it set up and dial it in for what I need. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's set up. I'm going to test it on this piece of oh, OSB plywood here. Um, like most of uh, the Craftsman accessories before the fall, this thing is kind of an over-engineered uh, piece of junk. Uh, it, it should work. Um, it's a little flimsy, you know, where it shouldn't have been flimsy. But it should be fine. And I was wrong about that router. I thought it was the same model. It's got this this uh, slap-on spindle lock that actually would make the spindle uh, too shallow for the collet nut to fit. And so I had to pull off the spindle lock. And that's fine, I just shove a screwdriver in there to lock the spindle like, like they used to do in the olden days. So, it's not that big of a deal. I've already set the pivot, and all I have to do is set the um, actual uh, diameter. I'm just going to set it kind of to the edge of this plywood. I've got the, the pivot right in the center, so 24 inches. So I've got this 12 inches from that side and also 12 inches for that side. I'm going to make just under a 24 inch circle. So right off the bat I can tell that this uh, circle jig is going to be a bust because if you can see this is where the beam connects to the base plate. This is actually where the pivot is. Now take a look at that distance. This is a this is going to be a 24 inch diameter circle and I've only got maybe two inches left so my guess is the smallest circle I can make with this jig is going to be 20 inches which is a little ridiculous but so it looks like I'm uh, making my own circle jig after all. See if I can get this out. Well, it's locked up nice and tight now. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna have to switch routers. 
Oh, geez. All right. I'll be right back. So just be for uh, your tempted uh, bad mouth craftsman too much, um, even though the design leaves a lot to be desired sometimes. Um, the plastic was the the uh, motor fan. And the motor fan came into contact with the housing, and the reason for that is because I removed the spindle lock, which just happens to double as the bearing uh, keeper. And so as you can see, the bearing is sticking out now a good almost maybe 3 16 of an inch. The whole thing dropped and it ran the fan into the housing. So, bah, you live and you learn. I'm, this is the first time I've used this router in two years. I'm not going to um, cry too much over it. I will probably take it apart and see if it's salvageable. And if not, <laughs> it's pretty bad. So, the reason I assumed that taking this off would be fine is because I, I saw that this has um, a lock nut on it that uses a two-pin spanner wrench to take it off, and I thought that's what was holding the whole assembly together. But I was wrong, and that is the consequence. Let me go get the other router. Well, needless to say, I got distracted. And I ended up taking apart the router after all. <laughs> and um, so, this white ring of plastic used to be a cooling fan. And now it is no more. The cooling fan are just little bits and pieces of plastic like that. So, I'm not sure if I'll I'll go on the Sears website and see if they have parts, you know, but it's not so bad like the part won't be bad if I if they have it in stock, you know, it'll probably be 5 bucks or something. The problem is the shipping. They they're like $15 for shipping. They're kind of ridiculous from their parts center. The other casualty was the little LED light ring. Um the fan blew through uh the wiring on it and I could fix that if I want but I don't know if it's worth it I don't I think the lighting on the underside of a router is kind of a gimmick anyway so anyway, I'm gonna go do a little research um, I'm gonna see if I can't um, find one of these fans and I don't know how bad it would be to run it without a fan but I suppose they are there for a reason so I want to not burn up this thing if I even get it back together. Either way, I mean, I've got to put this this guy back on, which interferes with the collet, and so I might have to modify this. I think I'm, I'm just going to cut off this whole assembly here, this portion of the assembly, and only keep this as a bearing retainer bracket. I don't know. $20 router, he said. Great bargain, he said. Well, now look at me. I'm going to wrap up this video here, and then um, I'm just going to do a part three to get back working on that, because this is kind of uh, taking longer than expected. So, thanks everybody for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy my misadventures here, and uh, if you have any suggestions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Go ahead and hit that like button. Or, and uh, subscribe if you like this type of content. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.